All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be overviewing why you should self-host your password manager, when and when not to, and then I'm gonna be showing you how to do it with a self-hosted Docker container using a Docker desktop. So yeah, let's get into this video. Now, full disclosure, I am gonna be using today's video sponsor, Passable, which is a free open source password manager, uh, and I'm gonna be showcasing how to self-host your own vault. And there's seriously no gimmicks, it's completely free and, and yeah, it's open source, which is the best part of Passable. The LastPass Sega, I feel like, never ends. Uh, like, every few weeks or months, there is some sort of disclosure with LastPass or just some password manager. And a few months ago, I actually created a video talking about LastPass being hacked. And, you know, the TLDR was... Yeah, they didn't do really good with their security measures. And one of the big consequences of trusting a proprietary product or software is exactly that. You can't see their security model, especially given how sensitive passwords are to our online ecosystem. I mean, they drive everything that we do. Uh, it just makes more sense to do an open source password manager. And uh, you have security researchers, professionals that can come in and actually take a look at the code. It's just It just makes sense. Yeah. Well, at least in my opinion. The proprietary versus open source battle of software has been going on for years. And um, really, I think a lot of tech-minded users have taken in their approach of going out, creating their own self-hosted vault. All right, so starting off with Passable security model. Now, most password managers use the standard master password to encrypt and decrypt the password vault, as well as control access to the platform. And this is only as secure as the master password, and the user, of course, has to remember it. Now, most good password managers, of course, offer some sort of 2FA or MFA capabilities, and you definitely want to enable 2FA or MFA. Passable takes a whole different approach to this model. They have MFA kind of embedded within their security model. So here is how it works. Like most password managers, Passable does accept and create a master password, but this acts as more of a passphrase and doesn't control the overall access to the platform. Instead, Passable uses challenge-based authentication to provide access. So if someone theoretically were to steal your master password, they still couldn't get into your Passbolt security vault. Passbolt uses the open PGP encryption standard to really achieve what this does. How this works is OpenPGP creates a public-private key pair, where both the private key and the public key are randomly generated. The private key is only stored on the local device, it never leaves that device, and the public key is given to Passable. Now, other password managers also use a private public key, but typically the private key is derived from your master password, so it's not completely random. This would allow attackers to unlock your vault using brute force with the master password, especially when it's weak. So like I said, in Passable's model, they use OpenBGP to create a public-private key pair, the public key is sent to the Passport server. The private key never leaves its local device. So where does the master password come in and how does this all work together? Well, the private key is used as the primary uh, form of authentication to unlock your password vault. Now, in order to get access to your private key, you need to enter in the master password, which acts as a passphrase. So it decrypts your private key, which then the private key is then used to uh, decrypt your password vault. And the private key never leaves your device and is never sent to the Passable cloud. This authentication method uh, prevents intruders because they have to have access to both your master password, which is um, something that you know, and then your private key stored on a local device, something that you have. So it's MFA embedded within the system itself. Passable's challenge-based authentication method is clever and unique, but keep in mind, you still need to memorize that passphrase or that master password if you want to get access to your private key stored on your local device. Ideally, what you would want to do is back up your private key, uh, maybe print it out on a piece of paper or store it in an offline uh, flash drive and then put that into a fireproof safe so that if you were to forget your master password, you still can type in um, and supply that private key just in case. Now that we've had a quick overview of Passport security model, let's overview why you should use password managers and specifically locally host your own password vault. So like anything, there's pros and cons to self-hosting. Why would you actually want to go out and self-host? 
Well, you have secure and private data storage as long as you know what you're doing. Of course, uncompromised data security as long as that server has been properly secured. There's full user control over where your passwords are stored and how they're stored. And, you know, I know it's a little bit harder than looking at Notepad and just writing down all your passwords there. But once you have a self-hosted vault up, it's easier for integration and flexibility. And um, it's it's a pretty fun little project to create, uh, especially as somebody who's you know in the tech space. There are, of course, drawbacks to self-hosted vaults. Uh, some of the big ones are like flexibility, right? So you have a big hybrid ecosystem, phones, you're on your home network, you're at a company, you're at a coffee shop. Uh, having flexibility of using your passwords when you want to is, of course, really important. And with a self-hosted vault, if you're going to expose that to the internet, even tuck behind a VPN or a firewall, well, you are in charge of the security. So if you misconfigure something, that is, of course, on you. So using a solution such as Passbolt, which is open source, it's free. They don't lock you into a specific hosting model. You can choose as the user. If you want to go out and self-host your own vault in a Docker container natively on your own uh, Linux distribution, you can. They have extensive documentation. It's made for developers. Or you can try out their cloud uh, or pro editions for free. And if you like the flexibility and you like what you see, of course, you can uh, subscribe to the cloud editions. Uh, and what's really cool about Passbolt is that they listen to their audience. If you look here, these are features that are currently being integrated or are already have been integrated into Passable, and they listen to their audience. For example, um, a few months back, they didn't have 2FA. Well, they got 2FA installed, and they have all of these features in the backlog, and they it's, it's an audience-based kind of approach, which is super nice, and, and that's just what I love about open source in general. So when should you choose to self-host over using a cloud option? Well, if you're a one-person team like myself, um, it's probably easy just to set up your own Docker container. And it's a fun little project to go out and self-host your own vault on your own home or LAN network. Now, of course, it can be risky if you don't know what you're doing and if you expose it to the internet, like I said. But, um, you know, the more users that one has, such as like a family or specifically in a company or uh, enterprise environment, well, it's going to be a lot harder. Not only do you have to do the security, but you have to have and make sure that you are running a pretty powerful computer, depending on how many users are using your uh, pass, password self-hosted vault. So let's go ahead and set up a self-hosted vault using a Docker container. I have Docker Desktop installed. I'm not gonna overview how to install Docker Desktop, but I will leave a link in the description below. So let's transition over and well, it's really easy. Okay, so here up on Passbolt's documentation page, like I said, they make this pretty easy to do. And there are all different types of ways to install Passbolt natively, or you can even use Docker containers, DigitalOcean, whatever you want to use. Uh, well, it's probably there. So our first step is to download the YAML file, which allows us to uh, build a Docker image and then run an instance or a container. Um, so I'm gonna be copying this link here. And because I'm on Windows and Windows legitimately sucks in this way, I'm using curl, I mean, which isn't bad, but wget a little bit easier. But anyway, using curl, you can do curl uh, URL and then just do output. And then the, just say, um, you know, docker-compose ce.yaml. All right, so here we have it up and running. All right, so performing an LLS here, we're going to see that we have our YAML file downloaded. Uh, now I'm going to be using Notepad to open this up and change a few environment variables around. So just doing Notepad followed by the docker-compose you're going to see a default configuration file. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and change a few things. And I actually have this in another notepad document. And it includes the following environment variables. So Passport requires that you must set up a few environment variables for email, even though this won't be contacting the internet. Um, so, you know, you're just using localhost and port 25. Uh, you can configure your name and Gmail if you want or email. And then also uh, this Passport SSL force environment variable here, I'm setting this to false because this is once again, just in a self-contained isolated environment. Um, 
I don't need to force SSL. Uh, and Passbolt does come pre-installed with a self-signed certificate. Um, so going ahead, copying all of this here, I'm going to change and paste this here. And that is good. Of course, if you want to change your name, and I'll leave these in the description below. I'm going to change the uh, URL path to just local host. And then here under ports, uh, I already did change, but you're going to change the port from 80 to 8080. So you're going to port map the uh, host port to the Docker container port. All right, so going back into the CMD, we can just choose to do a Docker dash compose dash F for file, choose the Docker YAML file and then do up dash D and this will create my own Docker container. Okay, so pasting in this command here, I'm going to um, go ahead and create a new admin account with my default name, password, email, and I can go ahead and just click enter. Now you're going to see this little uh, success message, hopefully, and in this case, you can copy this unique URL to go and create a new unique account. So if we go to a new tab, just paste this in, press enter, you're going to see this certificate warning error, just click advanced, accept risk and continue, and boom, Passbolt is up and running. Now Passbolt works through uh, browser extensions. So uh, if you have Firefox, Edge, Safari, Chrome, uh, you can download their Passbolt extension. So just download extension, add to Firefox, and that's pretty easy. At this point, you're going to go ahead, create a new master password. So dboo-da123, don't actually use that. Uh, click OK, then just click Next. You're going to see this Passbolt recovery uh, code. Make sure to save this file. Uh, ideally, this would be backed up on some sort of offline backup that's maybe in a safe. Um, but yeah, make sure to save that and then just click next. This is going to be a unique security token that's generated. Uh, I, I like to whatever, just do purple and then boom, password management. All right. So at this point, you literally have a full password manager up and running and open. So you can just, you know, click new password, add in URLs. So, um, for example, if I did, uh, D, D .com, the slow dbuda site boom dbuda store and then as you can see i have an account called d so um yeah it's literally that easy to set up this password vault uh and so then uh, what you can do is just ensure that that docker container is up and running at all times and you have a self-contained password vaults. All right, so yeah, that um, that makes for today's video. It's pretty quick, easy, up and running. So what are your thoughts on self-hosting your own password vault and what strategies do you use? You know, leave a comment in the description below. I'm always kind of curious to see people's strategies. And well, passwords, yeah, you get it. So uh, yeah, until the next video, well, um, yeah, have a good day.